Hey, this is Simeon, and it's time once again to take another joyful journey uh, using the real samples time machine. We're going to be taking a look at a harpsichord bundle that consists of an Austrian harpsichord, an English harpsichord, and a French harpsichord. So come along. Okay, we're back. And the reason I say Real Samples Time Machine is that Real Samples is a very unique company in that they have found beautifully preserved classical instruments, some uh, over 300 years old, and they have preserved those uh, beautiful instruments and not only preserved them, but also sampled them. So what that does, that allows us to be able to play these instruments ourselves in, in a way. <laughs> so it's the next best thing to be in there. So we're gonna take a look at three of these beautiful um, harpsichords, and we're gonna start with the Austrian harpsichord. So this harpsichord was uh, built back in 1671, and it was uh, built in Prague, which uh, belonged to Austria back then. So it has three sounds, an eight foot and a four foot register, and a combination of both. So let's, uh, let's dive in and have some fun. So you see that it comes up as a multi, and you need the full version of contact in order to play these, and they're, they're put together as multis. And so I'm going to, uh, I've got these in my quick load, so I'm gonna to go to the Austrian harpsichord. We've got two different tunings. We've got the 440 and the original pitch, which uh, is not 440, <laughs> which I think is actually 38, no, it's 392. So we're gonna take a listen to both of those. So here we go. I'm gonna load the uh, four foot equal temperament, and they've given us seven, uh, they've given us, they've given us several. Yes, yeah, so since the harpsichord is not velocity sensitive, we've got several layers of, of key down and the release samples where the plectrum resets. So, and the forefoot is the higher, is a higher pitched, um, Very nice and delicate. Now you can see, if you take a look, you can just see how that um, second contact, the release, so you can just kind of see it bumping a little bit. I'm gonna bump up the, uh, the volume so we can hear that. Yeah, you hear that? So every time you release the key, you're hearing a different uh, release sample. So because of the lack of velocity sensitivity in a harpsichord, you're going to get a different variation of how the keys and releases sound. And that's kind of cool. Okay, so now let's go and take a look at the eight foot. And this is going to be like an octave lower than the four foot. Yeah, once you start playing it, it kind of you kind of start feeling the um, the sound and different sounds and textures. They take you to different places. And now let's uh, put both of these together, both the eight foot and four foot together. So this this will be a nice fat sound. Now these have been equal temperament, uh, equal temperament tunings, and we have a Velati temperament. I'm going to throw the uh, Velati temperament up uh, in the eight and four foot stop setting, so we can kind of hear the difference. 
The other thing that you're hearing, having the eight and four foot stops together, you hear just like a cool chorusing type of effect. Here we go. This is the Velati temperament on the eight plus four. Let's just play C. Just a little bit of little bit of micro tuning every once in a while uh, to give it. Uh, so when you're playing chords and that kind of thing, it gives it a different texture. Let's go to the original pitch for a second and take a listen to that. I'm going to uh, do the original pitch in the equal temperament, and let's go ahead and do the eight plus four. And let's hear what uh, what this sounds like. I'm going to play in C, but it's not going to sound like we're we're normally here C. Yeah, it it's almost feels like a, almost like a whole half step or a whole step down. Now let's just do the Velati temperament in the original tuning. always like to um, experiment with effects. So I have um, I have Valhalla Shimmer over here. And so um, I've got that plugged in. So we're going to uh, see what happens when we put a little shimmer on top of the, uh, the harpsichord here. So you're ready? Here we go. And this is, this is wild. That's a little extreme, but it kind of gives you an idea of where you can take these. So you can take a harpsichord that was built back into the 1600s and bring it into the future. So that's what's that's what's amazing. So that's the Austrian harpsichord. So let's go on to the English harpsichord, why don't we? So now we come to the English harpsichord. It was built in 1766 by Jacob Kirkman. It has two manuals and different registers. It has what they call a lute stop and a nasal or a nasal stop. I guess that's the way I, I think about it. But we have eight foot and four foot in the re different registers. And then we have combinations of those together, which I think give us a, a whole lot of different possibilities, different com combinations. Let's go ahead and, and pull up the, um, the English harpsichord. And we've got the original tuning and the 440. So I always like to start with the um, or 440, just, just to kind of get warmed up to it. Let's start with a four foot stop. Different quality. Wow. Yeah, and they've got, they've given you all the notes to play with. Now let's go to um, the lower eight foot. 
Ooh, listen to that. Wow, listen to that. Very cool. And again, they give you multiple uh, key, uh, key down and multiple uh, key release samples so that uh, avoids that dreaded machine gun effect. That is very rich, very rich. Now let's go to the upper eight foot and hear what the difference is. Okay, you hear that? It's a little different. It almost has like a more, a softer quality to it. Um, now let's go to the upper and lower uh, eight foot and hear, hear that together. So this combines both the upper and lower eight foot together. Let's uh, load up the both both of the eight foot and four foot together. So this combines this just combines everything. So here we go. That is beautiful, fantastic. Okay, so let's uh, load up what's called the Lutstop, uh, the Lautenzug stop, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And this is a different, uh, different texture. This harpsichord just has so much versatility and all of the different uh, sound possibilities.
And now the nasal, uh, or the, the uh, nazug, uh, it, it th- makes me think of um, nasal. And when you hear it, you're gonna you're gonna understand why. Yeah. Very cool. So let's do this. Uh, let's do this. I always like to uh, bring bring it forward, bring it into today. So uh, I've got Arturia effects fragments uh, in the rack. So I'm going to um, I'm going to turn that on, and let's go back to that that two by eight. So the upper and lower eight foot together. I think that is such a rich um, that is such a rich sound. So let's do that and. We're going to turn on the um, effects fragments, and let's just hear what this uh, what this does to the sound. Oh well. Is this the same harpsichord? Just taking it into another place. Now let's see. So that's the dry sound, sort of. And it takes it and chops it up in all of these different grains. That's what you get. You start off with pristine, beautiful sound sources, and then you can take them anywhere you want to go to places that you would have never expected to you. Listen to that. That's just wow. Let's try just one more preset here, uh, and this is in the reverb. Let's go to... Um, a lush planet. I think this one sounds pretty cool. And this is still using both the uh, eight foot stops, the upper and lower eight foot stops for this. So it turns it more into like a pad. A really. Pitch. It gives you so many crazy places. Amazing. Okay, so now let's go to the French harpsichord. Last but not least, we have the French harpsichord that was built back in 1771 by Nicolas Pigelet. And it was built in the town of Dijon, and it is another double manual harpsichord. And one of the things that they talk about this sound is the bass and the beauty of it. So let's go to France and discover the French harpsichord. Okay, here we are. And you know, we have the same, we have the same setup. We have the multis, and you can see that I've loaded these inside of contact using the quick load. I always like to start with the forefoot and then we can just go from there. It's got a brightness to it, but it's got some additional overtones that I like.
And being a double manual, it just gives you such a, an additional level of versatility. <laughs> One of the things, too, about these harpsichords, that they're not just musical instruments. They are a statement of craftsmanship and art. Uh, they are pieces of art. If you look at the ornate craftsmanship and artistry on these instruments, they are statements of, uh, of beauty and craftsmanship. And that's what you hear come through when, you, when you're playing these samples, you have to take into consideration that it's just, there's so much going on artistically and all of the work and cra again, craftsmanship and artistry that went into that uh, instrument for us, it, beautiful. They just are so bold and powerful. So here is the lower eight foot and let's just, let's just grab the bass. <laughs> Yeah, I mean. So it goes down to the F. Now that's taken me to a, to a different place. And once again, Real Samples is giving us uh, multiple uh, key down samples and release samples and just pure crystal clear sound and it's just beautiful okay so let's go to both eight foot stops the upper and upper and lower together and then that just that just gives you a huge sound With other samplers, other harpsichord samples using the same sample, it would just drive you nuts because it's the same sample playing over and over again. But using multiple release samples and key down samples, it just makes it more alive. We've got to take a look at the 383 tuning. I think that is... Um, Fascinating to hear uh, the harpsichord in these different tunings. Uh, let's see. Let's just go back to that two, uh, two times eight foot stop. But this time it's at 383 hertz instead of the uh, traditional, well, for us, traditional 440. So here we go. Now I'm playing D flat, but it sounds like a, almost like a B, a B natural. It's pitched down, not pitched down, but tuned down, and that gives it another character. <laughs> Especially.
Okay, <laughs> that's a lot of fun, and it it just it just sort of just takes you uh, takes you there. Let's go back to four forty and go to the complete. So this is everything. This is both eight foot stops and four foot stops combined. So I'm just going to drag that up there and let that load in. These are so much fun uh, for me. It's just experiencing these instruments like this. Okay, so here we go. 440, and this is everything. Four, two, both fours and eight foot stops. Having that four foot stop on top just adds a little extra sparkle. That is big. Okay, so we've got to do this. So I'm going to um, go over here to my um, to my effects rack, and and uh, I've got black hole sitting here. So I'm going to um, go ahead and enable that. And most of the time with black hole, I just uh, I keep it at the default preset because it's when you open it up, it just it just takes it somewhere. So uh, let's just start with the. Uh, with the initial preset on black hole with this huge stack and let's um let's just hear where this takes us Playing with some of the depth and rate controls. I'm gonna crank the depth up on this. Yeah. We can freeze that. So pitch modulating that.
And so that's the harpsichord bundle. <laughs> they take you so this is Simeon wishing you a joyful journey wherever you go and always reminding you to stay joyful